So 2022 has come to an end, and with this last video of the year, I wanted to talk about some of the good, the bad, and the weird of the theme park world in 2022, and do kind of like a little ramble recap, talking about some some of the openings, some of the closings, some of the weird things that went on within the theme parks, and uh, kind of like set the stage for next year, because a lot is going to happen next year when it comes to the parks and of course uh, for a good chunk of the year I wasn't really making videos especially like news or like upcoming um, attractions and topics related videos so I wanted to do this video to kind of talk about some stuff I didn't get to talk about before um, sort of recap on things I already did talk about uh, and just do an overall look back at 2022 for theme parks and I will say it was a pretty solid year but let's start with the good let's talk about ride openings May saw the opening of Disney's newest attraction at Walt Disney World Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot and this one I have been on many times I really really love Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind I made a whole video I made videos about it I'm um, talking about Cosmic Rewind and I was there on opening day and that was a great memory um, for this year and uh, yeah so cosmic Rewind went open in may of course the omni coaster system and everything surrounding it uh, marvel finally coming to walt disney world um for their first and possibly only attraction i'm not sure if they're gonna do any more but uh that was a great um opening probably my favorite of the openings for this year and while not an official attraction inside of a theme park in December, we got the opening of the Universal Great Movie Escape. Uh, when the groove closed a few years back, a lot of people were speculating what they're going to do with the space in Universal City Walk, uh, and it ended up becoming an escape room theme to Back to the Future and Jurassic World. And this is pretty notable as it is the reintroduction of Back to the Future in an attraction and in Universal Orlando. And this is a really cool addition um, at this point in time, and uh, I think it deserved to make it onto this list. But we didn't just get new stuff opening we got a couple reopenings and there were two that come to mind uh, relatively recent ones um, in the Disney side that are really really interesting the first being um, on in both Disneyland and Walt Disney World Fantasmic um, and the reception and hype for this show um, this version has been immense. I have not seen hype surrounding a fireworks show or a nighttime spectacular coming back um, in my lifetime. The fact that this show just got so much attention when it came back really shows how important the show is for both Disneyland and Hollywood Studios. And another foundational Disney attraction coming back, the Walt Disney World Railroad just reopened last week, um, December of this year. Uh, and that's quite a big deal when considering the history of Disneyland and the Disney parks, you know, the whole Disney park idea was started by a railroad so the railroad in Disneyland Magic Kingdom and all the other castle style Disney parks is quite an important feature um, so having the railroad at Walt Disney World finally open after many many years is very exciting to me um, and I'm very excited to finally see it back however while we have a lot of ride openings and a lot of new things coming we also had quite a few things go away and uh, January really kicked off uh, the sort of closing season with Shrek 4D going away at Universal Studios Florida on January 10th. This of course was the 3D style attraction that is going to become the new Minions uh, Villain Con uh, attraction. Also in January, we saw the closure of The Mummy for a very, very long refurbishment that they're still technically under. Uh, the ride is open, I've been on it. They just opened the Express Line, uh, I think last week or two weeks ago, so December of this year, um, they just reopened that Express Line. So The Mummy was down for pretty much the entire year. Uh, so. I, I consider that a closure, but the only closure that matters at Universal is the surprise closure of Monsters Cafe on Friday the 13th in April. And yeah, that was probably the biggest casualty of this year. And now there's one opening that happened at Walt Disney World that I didn't mention in the opening section, and I wanted to give its own section. This year saw the opening of the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. The hotel, while I've never been able to stay there, um, had some really interesting looking theming from the videos and photos that I've seen, and some great character interactions from droids and different alien creatures, of, other than the main ones that you can see in Galaxy's Edge, um, and I think it's really great that they added all this stuff. Uh, of course, unlimited blue milk, who can go wrong with that? Um, but the real bad with this 
comes with the price. Thousands of dollars you're spending on a room here, and it is a quite limited and rigid experience. It kind of took experiences that were supposed to come to Galaxy's Edge in the park and put them behind a paywall and basically uh, limited them to the Galactic Star Cruiser rather than putting it in Galaxy's Edge, like the roaming droids and the roaming characters and some of the restaurant ideas that were gonna come to Galaxy's Edge. And it also locked the timeline. So Disneyland got to have Mandalorian and Boba Fett and some of these new character meet and greets from the Disney Plus shows while we're kind of just stuck with this timeline in the sequel trilogy. Um, and that can deserve its own video and people have made videos on this. Let's talk about merchandise. There's some pretty cool merchandise that came out this year, Guardians the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind had some really cool stuff, uh, Marvel-based merchandise. Uh, of course, Universal's put out some cool merchandise across the year, but there's one piece of merchandise that I think is the most interesting piece of merchandise, the most talked about piece of merchandise this year, and that is the Figment Popcorn Bucket from Epcot's Festival of the Arts. I, nobody could have predicted the seven uh, to 10 hour wait time that this would pull, the frenzy eBay prices um, that this would pull uh, made national news. So it was interesting that's probably one of the most memorable uh, and sort of strange things that came out of 2022 when it comes to theme parks and speaking of cartoon mascots that make everybody go crazy we got a couple little funny guys this year of course, we have Earl the Squirrel from Universal, which is their kind of Christmas mascot. He was promoted a lot more this year um, than he has been in previous years, and I hope he gets a spot in the parade next year because he really deserves it. But also, we got the first time arrival of the viral sensation known as Lil Boo for Halloween Horror Nights. Of course, this was born out of the Halloween Horror Nights sort of Twitter community and uh, has been promoted to official merch status, um, being on literally everything for Halloween Halloween Horror Nights, even getting to the point where it was kind of annoying some people. And on the topic of annoying people, I'm going to keep talking about Epcot because Epcot turned 40 this year. I was there on Epcot's 40th anniversary and uh, I didn't do a video um, just because I didn't really feel like vlogging it, um, but we did wait in the insane line for merchandise in the creation shop. Um, we saw a little bit of the sort of opening ceremony they did over by the American Adventure um, and I really enjoyed that they played the original entrance loop at the front in front of Spaceship Earth for Epcot's 40th. So that's definitely a good thing this year. I really think it was subtle, um, but it was pretty good. Uh, they did some stuff for the classic fans, um, you know, more than is usually uh, at Epcot. So yeah, Epcot 40, pretty good. So talking about things on the horizon, let's talk about D23. Now D23 2022 was really a mixed bag. There were a few good things, like the announcement of Happily Ever After returning to the Magic Kingdom, and the Hatbox Ghost being brought to Walt Disney World, both of which really excite me. And then, But then there was a lot of sort of disappointing announcements, like the Blue Sky stuff coming to Walt Disney World. You know, this year, 2022, a lot of people were expecting Disney to come out of the gate with something uh, big, something bold, something that would compete against Epic Universe, a state-of-the-art theme park that's being opened by their biggest competitor. They really just kind of threw ideas out there. Uh, you know, of course, they suggested the Moana replacement for Animal Kingdom, which I'm kind of 50-50 on, uh, and the Coco, Encanto, and Villains addition to Magic Kingdom. And while I'm all open for them adding stuff to Magic Kingdom, especially when they don't have to take away anything. I don't really get excited for these ideas because many of these ideas, especially when it comes to Walt Disney World, um, the, the blue sky stuff, it, a lot of the time it either gets downgraded or just completely scrapped. I mean, we lost the Play Pavilion, the Mary Poppins ride, a few of the other additions for Epcot, like that original Festival Center. It's been three years and a lot has changed since 2019, so I was really hoping they would have more to announce at D23, but but it just felt like they were just kind of throwing out ideas and seeing what stuck. And it felt like less of a plan uh, for Disney to make these announcements and say, here's what we're doing for you guys. Here's what we're doing for the fans and just for the general tourists. And more of just, oh, we have to throw something together uh, to put out a D23. And this sort of attitude has been indicative of the later Chapek era, which brings me to my next piece of news. Uh, Bob Chapek being ousted in November of this year to bring Bob Iger back. Now, I don't think Bob Iger is going to completely change the company like how some people think that, oh, now 
these reservations and lightning lanes and Genie Plus, it's all going to erratically change. Uh, I could see it changing somewhat in the future, um, but for now, I think it's more just to get the company back on track, back on a plan. And I just hope that with Bob Iger and whoever comes in the future, more spending can be put towards the parks, maintaining the attractions that are there as on top of building new stuff. But yeah, lots open, lots closing, lots of weird stuff, some good stuff, some bad stuff. Bob is gone. Another Bob is in. We got all kinds of new stuff happening. And uh, 2022 was definitely a interesting year um and uh lots to look forward to though for 2023 in the channel uh you know the channel has gotten a lot more attention this year and i'm hoping um next year we'll just get more and more we can just get more and more people in the community um that'd be really amazing i have so many plans for next year's videos um you know disney 100s kicking off next year many new attractions are opening up um and may some new stuff probably going to be announced next year i'm sure so uh, if you want to be here for all that, uh, please leave a like and subscribe. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video sort of just recapping everything. Also, let me know in the comments, what is your favorite and least favorite uh, theme park item, theme park thing that happened this year? Right opening, right closing, uh, uh, Bobby gone, Bobby back food item, merch item, store, whatever. you Whatever was your favorite thing from this year, please leave it in the comments. I really want to hear. Probably my favorite would have to be a Cosmic Rewind, right? I love Cosmic Rewind. Um, again, videos on Cosmic Rewind. And uh, my least favorite, probably got to be Monsters Cafe. That was very sad. But anyway, that's a wrap on 2022 and uh, 2023. It's going to be big. So thank you all for watching again, and I will see you all next time.